If you clicked on this video, you or someone you know is a micromanager. I feel sorry for you. And this is why you need to change or get out of there right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am in a different hotel. I am in Chengdu, China right now, sitting in my hotel room. As you can see from my messy bed behind me, please don't judge me. I've tried to just kind of organize it as quickly as possible. Now onto the rest of the video. Let's face it, we've all dealt with bosses that exude this kind of behavior. Always looking over our shoulder at every single task and micromanaging us on every single task that, uh, that we're trying to do, uh, pinging us incessantly on Slack, on updates, on projects, or even sitting in on meetings that really don't warrant their participation whatsoever. To be honest with you, this is probably causing you anxiety. It's already causing me anxiety just talking about it. It is a waste of time for pretty much every single person involved. No one likes Big Brother looking over our shoulders. I've held the stance for a long time. Micromanaging stems from something within a person where they feel that they've lost control of every or all aspects of their lives. They have anxiety over this and therefore they need to take back control by micromanaging as deeply as humanly possible. The more emotional damage that they've suffered, the stronger the micromanager. At least this is from my experience. I don't have any scientific proof to back this, but that's really been from years and years of working under certain personalities, shall we say, challenging personalities. From what I've experienced, there is a direct correlation between the two things. Point number one, Whoever signed up to be uh, micromanaged in a job, absolutely no one. You don't see anyone raising their hands being like, pick me, pick me. I want to be, you know, volunteering for a job um, that says micromanaged. Why would you? It's an awful feeling for someone to constantly be looking over your shoulder. Where's the trust? The trust that you, you know, hired the right person. The trust that they have the right skill set and the knowledge base to be able to execute on the tasks that they were assigned and given. Also the trust that if they actually needed help from you, they could come to you with open arms. Without trust, there can be no progress. There can be no empowerment and empowerment honestly breeds the best ideas and propels companies forward. Point number two, micromanagement breeds dissension. Micromanagers like to cite the fact that their methods work because they seem to think that achieving their KPIs is all that matters. While I have to admit that their net goal can possibly be achieved and might actually be achieved, we're not accounting for the cost of turnover. When have you ever seen an organization with heavy micromanagers actually having employee retention and positive employee surveys? Never. It just doesn't happen. That's why micromanaging is and always will be a short-term fulfillment to plug in those holes in a leaky bucket, but they're never a long-term vision that's going to propel the company forward for years to come. If this is your first time to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Really helps the channel grow. I am trying to save the world one piece of advice at a time, one step at a time, and I can't do that without you all. So thank you so much. Point number three, time isn't something that you can buy back. Micromanaging is exhausting. Let's face it, triple checking people's work to see if things were done properly, constantly looking at reports to see if employees have done their job or are doing their job, setting up software just to monitor if people are doing their work. It's tedious, labor intensive, and not to mention tiring. You could be doing way better things with that time and leveraging way higher macro effects within the company that's actually going to impact your employee base tenfold. You know, researching, working, coordinating with HR or people in culture to research a benefits plan or a stipend for flexible wellness or well being. You know, it could be like $100 towards a gym, personal trainer, yoga, whatever that might be. And those things can be tax write offs. You can also probably get a really good group package with that. Just because if you have a big organization with, you know, 400 employees, you're sending them to one gym, possibly, right? If people do pick a gym to go to, that's going to be a ton of business for them. Seating control is difficult. Trust is difficult. Belief is difficult. And having faith in your workers is also difficult. But if you can embrace any of these elements or even all of them combined, I can promise you this. 
Your workers are going to be happier today than they were yesterday, and they're going to be happier tomorrow than they were today. You'll be happier too. You'll be anxiety-free, hopefully, <laughs> and free from having to constantly watch over every single action or an action that is within the office. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching my video. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell. And really, I want to hear from you about your experience as a micromanager or someone that's been micromanaged before. The good, the bad, the ugly. I really want to hear it. Maybe you have a different take on micromanaging and why it is effective or ineffective. I might have a different philosophy from you. I am open to hearing all different types of angles, but I'd love to hear from you and get some participation in the comments below. It really matters to me on your take of things, whether you got something out of this video, that's amazing. And that's why I get up in the morning and I do this stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Take care. Have a good night. Ciao. Peace.